going to show you a really unique piece um, and a very important piece that will allow that print to be much more open and soft handed. Uh, and, and here we go. So let me go ahead and hopefully you guys can hear me because I've been having audio issues. Can you hear me? All right. I hear some yes. Some yeses. All right. So I'm going to try to share my screen here. Uh, why is it not working? I've only done this a million times, even with you guys. All right. So what is the deal? Here we go. I'm, how about I just choose the Photoshop one? All right. How we, we good? Can you see it? All right. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. So here we go. Uh, so this is created with AI. So um, if you create your own artwork with AI or you do your old school like I do, like I love to do, uh, you can go ahead and do this. So just kind of want to show you a little bit really quick about the file and the way it's built, right? So you see it, my layers over here on the right-hand side. This is small uh, Louisville type. So if I turn that eyeball off, it's just the stuff that's in the middle of this bar here in the lines, right? And I did that for, for a couple of reasons. One, I created the whole layout so I can do these things. <laughs> uh, two is we're going to half tone the lion and remove the, the black background, uh, but I don't want to assign a halftone screen to the small stuff, right? So when you create your own artwork, if you can, if you have small text and little bitty things, uh, put that on its own layer, turn it off as you're working, and then when you're finished, you can turn it right back on, and it will be super clean and crisp and won't have the halftone uh, edges applied to it, right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. And if you look, you can see my uh, my layers. This is my original art. It is flattened on a white ba uh, black background. Flattened on a white background. It's a little early for me. Uh, so uh, you can see that here, right? So this is how you're going to knock the shirt color out because it's going to go on a black shirt uh, and apply half tones to it, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is what I always do, and I would recommend you guys doing it too, is I'm going to duplicate my artwork layer just so I always have it original because I've been known to screw things up sometimes, right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to select menu and I'm going to come down to color range. Right. And I'll get this fuzziness slider thing here. Right. What does this mean? I have no idea, but I can tell you how it works. So uh, if you look at my image here, right, it's going to select the color that I choose. So I'm going to choose black. Right. I'm just going in the background here, choosing black. And as I move this slider, you can kind of see more of my image disappear or more of it come back. You're going to want to play around with this slider a little bit. Sometimes you're going to want to do 100. That's what I'm going to use for here. Um, sometimes you do 125, maybe 150, 200. It just depends. And, it, and what I mean by that is if I go to, if I go past this 100, see this dark blue in this image? It's going to start taking some of the black that's in that dark blue, and it's going to make it transparent or not solid, right? Which means it's going to be just a transparent edge. And I don't want that. I want the blue to be solid blue. So that's where this fuzziness slider comes into play, right? So I'm gonna leave it at 100. I'm gonna hit okay. And I get this all my marching ants, right? So if I just hit the delete key on my uh, keyboard here, I'm gonna deselect it. So we just remove the black from my image. Now, this is almost what my transfer is going to look like. So if you can imagine that being printed as a DTF transfer, there's a lot of open space in here. So that's a that print is going to be really, really soft handed on your garment. Uh, but in order for that to work, we have a couple things to do. Because if you come over here and you look at this gradient in here, DTF does not like gradients. So we have to accommodate for that, right? And that's how we're going to do it with our halftones here. So uh, so we have this here. So now what I'm going to do is create a new layer, right? Right above it. I'm going to use hit my command or control key on your PC. And I'm going to click. I am in Photoshop, by the way, just so you know. Uh, and I'm going to click on the preview here, this layer. And that's going to select everything on that artwork layer. So now with my new layer selected, my foreground color, if you can see my cursor over here, right, is black. So I can go ahead and fill it with black. So I'm just going to hit Option Delete on my Mac or Alt Backspace on your PC. And if I deselect it again, now you can see we took all the color layer and just made a black layer for it. And what that's going to be is become our mask, right? So now I'm going to duplicate my file. So I'll go to Image, uh, Duplicate. I don't care about the name because we're just going to steal a body part out of it. So it's no biggie. Uh, all right. So now this is my new uh, my new file. And I'm going to go to my image menu at this point. And I'm going to change it to grayscale because what I'm trying to get to is this bitmap at the top. You can see it's grayed out. So I'm going to go to grayscale here. And I'm going to go ahead and hit merge because we're going to have to do it anyway. So just do it now. No biggie. All right. So now 
it is a grayscale image. So now I'm going to go right back to image mode. And now my bitmap is available to me. So I'm going to click on it. And is it okay to flatten Im uh, the image or the layers? Yeah. Um, now, I don't remember. Honestly, it's been so long. I don't remember where Photoshop defaults. I think it's Diffusion Dither here. <clears throat> but I'm trying to shoot for a halftone screen. So you want to choose halftone screen and hit OK. Notice I'm, my output is at 300 pixels print. That is high resolution. Then I'll get this window. <clears throat> now, I like in DTF to use 20 line halftones. Um, my frequency is 20. You can do whatever you want. The smaller the dot, so say we bump that up to a screen print resolution of 45 or so, I think the dots get too small. And when you got adhesive powder going over things, it can squeeze out around the edges. And I have the technical term I call it, it'll look like snot all around your stuff. Try it, see if it works for you. I would recommend 20 or 17 or 14 even, like giant dots. But 20 is a really good one. It's my favorite. That's what I go to kind of all the time because it's super easy and it looks beautiful when it's done. Um, I like my angle to be 61. That's what I use for my screen printing stuff. I keep it that way. And I'm going to keep my dot shape as an ellipse. Again, same stuff that I use for my screen print stuff. So I'm going to hit OK. And now look at it. We have halftones now, right? So remember when we zoomed in on that lion's word, it was a gradient. Well, now we have a dot that we can use, right? A solid dot. That's what's going to allow us to do uh, halftone stuff, uh, DTF printing with this. So what I got to do now is take this channel and bring it into my other document. But before I can do that, I have to go back. I got to go to image menu mode and go back to grayscale. Uh, this is a default size ratio to is one. I just hit OK. So now I'm going to pull my tab out, right? Just let it go. And if I come over here, you can see uh, I have channels, right? So it has a great channel because it's the only thing in it. Why is I hate this? See, Google, not a fan. Don't know why I put those stupid warnings. But uh, I'm going to grab this channel and bring it into my original. I'm going to let it go. And there it is. Right. So it's sitting here in my channels. Right. So now to select it, remember, you use your command key, control key on your PC. I'm going to go back. Uh, I'm going to turn everything on here. I'll turn that one off. Go to my layers. So now we have to do something with this guy. Right. So I'm going to grab my original artwork and I'm going to duplicate it again. Right. I'll turn it on. I'll turn everything else off. Right. So now I have my original artwork, which is flattened. It's selected from my halftone stuff. So I'm going to invert my half, my selection. So select invert, right? And you see that. Now watch when I hit the delete key. I'm going I'm to deselect it, right? So now this looks like uh, it did just a little while ago. But if you look in my lion's we, uh, word here, that gradient now has the halftones. So I'm almost done. So now what I want to do is I'm going to select again my layer, right? And I'm going to get rid of the really, really small, small things because, again, sometimes they'll have a – I'm going to deselect for a second here just to show you. Some of the really small little bitty specks and bits and pieces, you kind of want to clean that stuff up or you'll get like random you know, dots all over the place. Uh, a lot of them will fall off before it transfers, but I'll show you how to clean it up. So hold Command key, click on it. I'm going to go to Select menu, right, and I'm going to modify my selection, and I'm going to contract my selected area by two pixels. I hit OK. And now I'm going to go back to my select menu, modify, right? And I'm going to expand my selection by two pixels. And then now if I invert my selection again, because that's the artwork that's selected. So I'm going to go ahead and inverse this. And then I'm going to hit delete. And if you notice, watch, I'll Command Z that. Uh, we'll go back in my history here. Kind of just, I don't know, just focus in somewhere. You'll see a difference, right? We're getting rid of the small, small details. Uh, so that looks pretty good. I deselected. I'll create a new layer. And it's going on a black shirt, so why not just fill it with black? And if you zoom, if I zoom in here, you can see we have halftones wherever there was transparency, right, in, inside the, the letters here, uh, throughout the image that happened to have, you know, transparency. This now is ready to go. I'm going to turn on my, my back, uh, my little type right here. There you go. <clears throat> so now if I turn my back, my black background off, I would go ahead and print this file. This will become my DTF. When I smash it down on a black shirt, this is what it's going to look like. I show this image and I have printed samples in all my classes and whatnot. So um, that's how you create halftones for DTF. A couple of things before we get out of here, because it's a short one today, is 
you saw all the steps. I'm going to tell you a little secret. Uh, if you are a Transfer Express user, right, and you want to get DTF stuff from those guys, go check, go up, go there, create your artwork like this without the halftone stuff. Just have your original one, which would be the, the halftones piece like this, right? Just turn the background off and upload this file because what's going to happen is there's a one click button that would generate the half tones for you. Poof, bada bing, done. All these steps are not necessary. Just wanted to let, make sure you knew that was available. So if you uh, want to learn more, I will have three, no, I got like four or five classes in Atlantic City uh, for the impression show. Um, you can always find stuff uh, that I do at daneclement.com. That's my website. There's a bunch of free videos there. So go check those out. And um, yeah, that's all I got today.